Hello, I want to take you through now quality assurance policies, processes, and procedures. I am Professor Owajaja Juliet Negbedio, the Director for Quality Assurance in National Open University of Nigeria. And now, quality is the watchword. There is a quality culture that gets everyone involved in now. Now aligns with the operational definition of quality as fitness for purpose, fitness of purpose, value for money, and for the transformation of learners. Now, in applying the operational definitions in National Open University of Nigeria, we're going to take them one by one. First, we're going to look at the fitness for purpose. This ensures that the educational provision meets the vision, which has to do with access and quality, meets with the mission, which has to do with the functional cost-effective uh, flexible and lifelong learning, and meet with the strategic goal, which has to do with equity, quality, social justice, and national cohesion. The second part is the fitness of purpose. And this is done by ensuring that the educational provision meet with national and international standards. There we have the value for money, efficiency, and effectiveness toward delivering with the high competency. And finally, we talk about the transformation of learners. And this is a positive change of learners at the completion of their studies in now. This is the core which drives the institutional activities. Now, this takes us to quality assurance. Now believes in continuous process of evaluating the quality activities towards guaranteeing itself and stakeholders that its academic and operational activities are consistently of excellence. Now, therefore, now academic and operational activities are guided by policies and as stated to reflect the institutional vision, mission, objective, and core values. Now, let's look at the processes. What are the processes that now undertakes to ensure that there's quality in every aspect of the task or activities that is being carried out? Now, we have eight major activities in now that are quality action. The first is the institutional governance and management. In the aspect of the institutional governance and management, there is a policy that helps to guide every operations at the institutional level. And in this regard, special attention is given to the, 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 the organogram, the structure of communication, the structure of management, and the structure of administration at different facets both the middle and the high level manpower that need to be uh, involved in the processes of the activities that have been carried out in the university. Now we can look at the teaching and learning and the aspect of teaching and learning is start with the program design. We have to talk about the program design and development and in looking at the program design and development there is a policy also that drives it and there is a process you need to pass through to ensure that the program is being designed according to what is being stated. And in this regard, attention is specifically given to the requirement of the learners, to the requirements of the employers, of uh, the employers of labor, and the society at large. Then we have to look at, again, the course design. Because after the program has been designed, you go to the course design. And the course is designed to ensure that it is uh, learner-centered. And again, it is in quite interactive. And the process is put in place also for review. You have a process of review of the programs, the process of review for the courses, and for the process of review for the content that you have in the courses. Then we equally emphasize also the integration of the learning support that you put into it. Now let's look at the media and technology. National Open University, basically all the activities there is driven by media and technology. So a particular emphasis Purposeful emphasis is being given to media and technology in National Open University of Nigeria to ensure that the adequate media, the adequate technology is being provided to drive the various activities. Then we have the learning infrastructure and facilities. The learning infrastructure in this instance, again, we look at the digital infrastructure, we look at the physical infrastructure and facilities. In the aspect of the digital infrastructure, we look at the core software and hardware that can help motivate that can help make learning uh, selfless that can make learning easy that can make learning uh less stressful and in now we use it uh the elements we use it now is the module platform 
and we ensure that all the plug the necessary plugins they are there and again we have record studio that wherever you provide the learning uh, facilities now having done this also there are facilities we need to put in place at the study centers whereby we have the in-person facilities we have these facilities we put in place also that will help to drive every other activities in the aspect of learning examination uh in, in fact even in management because we call it consider what you need to put in place managing people managing staff managing students now we have to look at the learner support the learner support system is huge in the aspect of the learner support it is not just a one stop and go no the learner support purposely will have to integrate the learning support into all the activities we do in now especially in the teaching and learning process in the content development we purposefully integrate the learner support system however there is a major directorate that is devoted to learner support and that directorate ensure that all the learning support processes are put in place the way it ought to be and ensure that the processes have been accomplished in the actual area that it need to be now we have the human resources and development there is a policy also guiding this to ensure the right personnel are hired, the right personnel are assigned to the various activities, the right personnel are doing what they ought to do. Then we have again the collaboration and partnership. In the area of collaboration and partnership, the university collaborates with uh, similar institutions like now, and in this area, we equally have partners with, with industry in related areas. And in doing this, there are processes and procedure too that is being put in place to ensure that the collaboration and partnership is something that will benefit the university and benefit the learners. And again, we help to increase the improve or improve on the quality that is being uh, provided. Now, lastly, we have the research, innovation, and community service. Now, again, there is a policy driving this process. Here we have the research. The research cut across both the learners, the uh, staff, which will be the academic staff, and the community service that the research is going to provide to the community. And in this area now has actually been doing great because they have been able to come up with some kind of uh, innovation that have helped to impact the society, that have helped to provide solution to the society at one point or the other. So these are the major processes, the major activities that we do in now. And these activities are being quality assured because there are processes and procedures to ensure that the processes are in line and they are. So what are these procedures that are being employed? Looking at the procedure, now using different mechanisms for ensuring compliance, monitoring and evaluating of the processes. And the evaluation usually is being carried out to ensure to look out for where there are gaps, and where improvement is being required and the type of improvement that is being required. And in doing this, the first thing that is being done is to get the standard operating procedures. And the standard operating procedure is developed for all the activities. The faculty, the department, the units are meant to develop the standard operating procedure. And there is a format that cuts across everyone. And in that format, basic areas are being emphasized. First, you have to identify the activity. What activity is being carried out? And on each activity, what are the steps you're going to take in carrying out those activities? And when the steps have been identified, we need to know who is responsible in carrying out that activities. And what are the evidence to show that the activities have been carried out? And this takes us to the second part, having the quality assurance tool for monitoring compliance of standard operating system. Because from the two, you are not able to find out where the gaps are, whether the activities that the steps that were created for each activity were actually carried out the way it ought to be. And the process of carrying them out, we are there hindrances, we are there challenges, and those challenges have been identified. And those challenges will now be presented for review to make it better to improve on the various activities. Now, again, in National Open University of Nigeria, the monitoring and evaluation is result-based. We have a result-based monitoring and evaluation because you will have to evaluate our different processes get through to monitor and evaluate. Sometimes you have to evaluate the reports that have already been given by various directorate reports from uh, uh, the uh, maybe accreditors reports that would have come from different areas. We see that we have people that are dedicated within the 
QA will have the M and E officers that will carry out these activities. Now we have what we call the quality assurance audit policies and template, and we have the policy on institutional periodic review. So these policies from one point or the other, they are put together to ensure the basic things are being done. Now, what are the tools for evaluating the diversity quality effectiveness and efficiency? Because we have tools put in place to check whether the uh, university has been able to achieve the desired effectiveness and efficiency. And one of them is the learning analytics. Learning analytics is for a major tool because we have to analyze the different learning uh, uh, de uh, deliveries, the different learning experiences of the learners. And from there, we are able to get and evaluate in terms of effectiveness, in terms of efficiency, how well. And the QA officers at this time, we come up with reports that will show where need to be maintained, where there are gaps, the kind of improvement that likely will be done. And the directory that supports this learning analytics is a learning management uh, system. We have a directorate for con uh, the learning content management system who is in charge of delivering digitally for the learners. So go to the back end to get all the activities out. Then we have the audit report. Now, in the university, you carry out the audit periodically. And at the end of the audit, what happens that a report is presented? And that report is sent to the Senate. And the Senate will deliberate on the report. And the Senate committee is mandated to come up with plans that can be used, that will be approved by the Senate. And it will be sent to the Directorate of Quality Assurance to ensure that those plans are being follow through. So the QA work with the report of the audit. And that internal audit that we normally carry out is start with the faculties and the different units, departments, you self-evaluate, then the quality assurance uh, officers will come on board to use the self-evaluation report to now write the, uh, to audit the, the different activities with the, followed by site visitation. In addition to this, we have what we call this is these two kits that we normally use, and they come as a pair review also to help do that. Then another report that is so considered is the accreditation report. Every report that comes from accreditation, it is so considered to ensure that all the gaps that have been identified are used and they are worked with to improve on the process of delivery. Then the learner survey, we carry out surveys for the learner to get what the feelings of the learners are, we we'll carry out survey from the staff, both the teaching and the non-teaching staff, and follow up with tracer study report. Now, we have a report that also come from the graduates' employers. All those that have graduated from now, we follow them through to find out what are they doing, then how are they faring in line with their employers to know what ev eventually their positions are. And these are all put together to form that report. Now believes and promote continuous improvement of its academic and operational activities. So with this, I want to thank you for the rapt attention.